I like a good mystery, to know what happened and how it got this way. When pulled off right, a mystery can be a great way to not only make characters proactive, but the viewer as well, to get them engaged into the scenario, becoming active in their own right. From seeing the outcome of an event unseen, to finding clues that relate to said event, taking what you've absorbed and formulating a possibility, and just when you're confident that you've figured it out, or just when everything doesn't add up and you start feeling doubt, in comes the twist that punches you in the face while going, GOTCHA BITCH! This is why I like noir classics, the Maltese Falcon, and the Third Man. They hit those strides where I like them, and while mysteries are stories that I don't experience often enough, when I do, I tend to adore them. Hence why I really like Higurashi no Nakokoro ni and another. The question is, where does this leave Kami-sama no Memocho, an anime where mystery is the name of the game? Adapted from a light novel by Ikaru Sugi of the same name, Kami-sama no Memocho was directed by Katsushi Sakurabi and written by Takayo Ikami who also wrote Mowaru Penguin Drum. As we may already know by now, anime has the tendency to take pre-established formulas and provide a pretty hefty spin to it, sometimes creating some pretty unique, though occasionally out of its fucking mind results, though this particular show falls more into the former category. How? Well, Kami-sama no Memocho is about a neat detective agency. That's right, an anime about a team of neat investigators that features a lolly who barely leaves her room, an average teenage guy, and other neats as they go around and solve various investigations. Now, with a setup like that, it already has the potential to give us one hell of a refreshing ride. Does it succeed, however? Sit back, relax, and open a dokupe as I review Kami-sama no Memocho. Kami-sama no Memocho is mainly centered around a protagonist, Narumi Fujishima, an average teenage guy is always down because he feels like he has no place to belong, and as a result, he prefers to be alone. That was until he witnesses an event involving a falling teenage girl and some mysterious fellows. He is quickly accused of being guilty for the ordeal, but is soon let go when they figure out that he wasn't, and it's here where things begin to develop. Narumi soon meets Ayaka Shinozaki, a bright and cheerful classmate who not only brings him into the gardening club, but also to her part-time job at the Hanamaru Ramen Shop, where he meets the guys from before and marks his journey into a world unknown. He then meets their leader, Yuko Shionji, aka Alice, a serious moe-tastic lolly with a thing for computers, stuffed animals, soda, lolita dresses, really short shorts, and long stockings. It's revealed that she is a neat detective, a speaker for the dead who barely gets out of a room, resorting to using the internet and her fellow gang of neats with different skill sets. It's explained that they were investigating the disappearance of a teenage girl, and that her friend who fell out of the window might be the key to solving it. Fortunately, Narumi and said girl go to the same school, and Alice suggests that he helps out too. At first, he isn't too sure if he should get involved in helping them with their current situation, but eventually gives in and sets the rest of the show in motion. Kami-sama no Memocho doesn't follow a continuous storyline, but is set up in different arcs, or cases as I'll call them, with their own stories and subject matters, each lasting from one to four episodes. This can range from kidnapping to downright sabotage or theft. This is not an action-packed anime, going for subtlety and a little atmosphere, featuring a passive nature where things take their time in an attempt to either cool things down, build things up, or to provide necessary exposition to both the characters and the viewer. When things do get proactive, it can be pretty small and not of great importance. Fists are swung, but guns are barely pulled. This is an anime that prefers words and expects a bit of patience, fitting with the premise and the overall theme like cheese to a sandwich. The effectiveness, however, I'll get to that. The show doesn't outright change directions constantly like Fate Stay Night, an anime that uses more elements than this does, but rather it does brief deviations. It still has its tone most of the time, and when it diverges, and boy it does, it quickly recovers and nothing of relevancy has been lost. When needed to be, this can be a fairly grim show, and while it's not grim, dark, or anything like that, shit does get real at times. This is especially the case during moments when the show takes a 180, though this is a bit of a rarity. Characters are surprisingly diverse. Narumi is the middleman, Alice is the intelligent leader who takes her occupation very seriously, Ayaka serves as the helpful and innocent character at the show's disposal, while the others can range from being an army brat with tech smarts, the gigolo who uses his charms, and the tough muscle who can fight. If there's any real problem with them, it's that aside from Narumi, Ayaka, and the fourth, we don't get much insight or further depth to their characters aside from what's established, and while they aren't unlikable by any means, they aren't entirely compelling and mainly serve as parts of a unit that do what they do. This is especially the case with Alice herself, as we don't know how she ended up this way or managed to gather all these different personalities at once, let alone be their leader. This is a bit of a shame, because she and Narumi share probably the most interesting relationship dynamic in the whole show. Now, it isn't romantic per se, since there isn't much in the way of romance in this anime, but it does have chemistry. Narumi's the aimless teen whom Alice gave a purpose to, while he is her closest thing to an actual friend, the one she mainly relies on. This gives their apparent but indirect friendship a subtle bounce between association and romanticism, in that even if they don't always go hand in hand, they do need each other in one way or another. And I like this approach better than if it was flat out good gushy. That, and there's always something to like about the characters, even if they don't have much depth. But now it's time to get to the real meat of the show, and the question is, 
Does Kamisama no Memocho hold up as a mystery? Here's where things get a bit sticky. Despite the unique premise, tone, and narrative structure, there's one thing that holds it back, a problem that animes are prone of having. It tries to be more than one thing, with questionable results. You see, not all cases in Kamisama no Memocho are always serious, and when they are, certain direction decisions make for a somewhat shaky foundation, which does get in the way of the show's overall stance as a mystery anime. It starts out with a bang, what with its initial atmosphere and outcome, but it struggles to pick right up as the show goes into auto pilot, careening from one scenario to the next with minimal involvement from the viewer as you watch events unfold, and it's pretty much until near the end where it finally regains steam. Since this is set up in arcs with little to no relations to each other, there's very little time for development in the long run, and can limit how much each can offer. Some cases can get heated, others can feature a certain level of predictability the more you question things, while others don't even involve mystery at all. Last time I checked, baseball and breasts aren't mysterious. Yes, there are episodes dedicated to baseball and fan service. It also doesn't help that they just end. Really, they just end. Like they solve it and the day is saved thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. But who cares about payoff, man? These girls are about done taking the shower! When you get to the drama, things do get affected with fairly impactful tragedy sprinkled here and there, but it also has the tendency to slide the moments of melodrama, going all melancholy and serious business, when if you walk back and look, the show is being a little silly. Material for some very gripping stuff exists, but only a few times does it go the extra mile, and I felt like it should have held back in some parts in order to prioritize others. I was left with an intriguing anime that was never generally bland, but rarely exciting. It tries to be its own thing, but also tries to be like other anime at the same time, which happens to be its big weakness. A two-faced combination, and if Kamisama no Memocho was a cheeseburger, it would replace half the patty with ham. You can really like the ham, but even then, I ordered a full cheeseburger. I was shocked at times, and there was some guessing involved, but do you know what's even better? Going on a ride of curveballs, development, and hidden revelations that not only leads to a better sense of involvement, but also feelings of doubt, confidence, and resolve that could be manipulated, leading to a multi-layered experience when done right. Kamisama no Memocho culminated half of that at most, and what could have been an opportunity to tell a number of engaging, mind-bending, and manipulative stories ends up being engaging, tries to do the rest, while giving us shovels of other stuff. So now that I got the plot out of the way, how messy is the crime? scene. Insert subtle transition into presentation here. Produced by JC Staff, Kamisama no Memocho goes for a natural, colorful, but also slightly grim and occasionally atmospheric look and feel with its aesthetic, painting a world that tries to be as mysterious and optimistic as the anime itself, when it tries to be that is. With its bloom lighting, abundant shadowing, rich colors, and ambient shading, the show can look pretty good for the most part, though the CG can stick out. The highlight would most definitely be the lighting and shading. When it's day, the sun looms over as one big light source, and casts itself upon buildings, characters, and other entities within the environment. Making the shading pronounced, provides global illumination that bounces from one area to another, and numerous shadows that give an added kick. When at night, the lighting you see is what you get as the world is flooded with darkness, where street lamps, headlights, and ambient lighting become prominent. This can also carry over to certain indoor scenes as well, where light sources are limited. These give some of the anime's eerie sensibilities, especially when atmosphere kicks in, where there can only be one or two main light sources. So from a visual design standpoint, I really like the direction it aims for, though to say the same about the animation is not as easy. It's okay, but it never excels past a certain point, and there wasn't many moments where it displayed remarkability. It does take things up by a slight notch, but it lasts for a brief time, and mainly happens during moments that don't require a lot of movement. Sometimes there isn't even animation at all. Yeah, you go guys! It pretty much gets the job done. After all, not every anime is made by Ufotable, PA Works, or Production IG. Though if they were, that would be pretty fucking badass. Like the fourth. When you get to audio, things are up to par for the most part. Voice acting is solid enough so that it fits with any given event and intended mood, though it's strongest when everything goes into drama mode, where spikes of emotion can occur, and there are a number of those. Narumi sounds appropriate, displaying doubt and concern, but also sincerity and occasional optimism. Alice gives a serious demeanor but has a high-pitched MOE voice despite that, while the others output their characteristics with ease. It isn't top-notch, mind you, because if it was, I would put a heavier emphasis on it, but it does serve its purpose well. Then there's the soundtrack, which is the type I really like the most, a soundtrack that helps to represent the Show. In this case, the music fits with the show's overall passive nature, with its psychedelic and peaceful, but sometimes upbeat, stylish, and fast-paced tracks. Any piece can use a number of instruments, including guitars, pianos, drums, violins, and others, as well as a bit of psychedelic lyrics and a little rap, giving it variety and to help drive a scene's mood and energy. This is a soundtrack with theme and style, and I felt refreshed while listening. If you ask me, a good soundtrack is one with its own definition and flavor, and fortunately, this has both. I completely recommend listening to the soundtrack, which combined with the other aspects, makes the the presentation for Kamisama no Memocho solid for the most part, even if it doesn't entirely check out. I'm going to say it here now, Kamisama no Memocho is a good anime overall. 
but it's not a good mystery anime, and that's the show's biggest sin. To say that is not to say that there isn't substance, cause there is, but while the show doesn't completely miss, it doesn't score that many home runs. This can happen, but they are lost in time like tears in rain. <coughs> Blade Runner! <coughs> I liked plenty of things with this anime and how it does use them to an actual capacity for the show's benefit. I mean, it has the premise, the characters, the narrative structure, with the potential to tell a variety of engaging stories, the overall tone, and the admittedly effective twists caught my attention. But while Kamisama no Memocho made for a good experience, it didn't entirely live up to what was set on the tin, providing most of the ingredients, but lacking in others that would have propelled it to excellence. A good mystery is to hook you in, to get you involved, to get you active alongside the characters on screen as they unravel something unknown. That didn't happen often, and in the end, Kamisama no Memocho is a good anime, not a great one. Want you